What's up guys? So today we're doing one more algorithm problem. It's called reverse a single sublist. It's problem 7.2 of uh, elements of programming interview. And it's a problem called reverse link list to at lead code. So let's take a look at the problem statement. Reverse link list to. Given a link list reverse from position M to N, do it in one pass. We're giving a link list and a range of nodes that we want to reverse. I've done a problem called reverse link list uh, uh, some time ago, where we had to reverse the entire uh, link list. In this case, we just want to reverse a sublist. It might seem sound kind of easy, but it's actually much harder than it sounds. If we do it in two passes, it's easier because we just take the sublist out. We reverse the same way we reverse the link list in the reverse link list problem, and then we put it back at where we wa where we were. But here we want to do it in one pass, meaning we want to reverse the sublist as we are iterating through the link list. And to do that, it's very tricky in my opinion so here's a picture one of the users posted on lead code that i think really helps visualizing the entire process without looking at this picture i i found really hard understanding what was going on so let's suppose we have this link list here and let's imagine there are some nodes to the left some nodes to the right but the sublist that we were giving when was one two three and four we will use three pointers pointer p will stay one node before the start of the sublist and it will stay there throughout the process of reversing so we're not moving p will always be before one let's suppose the sublist was two three and four we would then then p instead instead of being here would be in one just because one is one node before the beginning of the sublist pointer s will also be on top of the same node throughout the process but we'll have the illusion that it's moving just because we're changing the references but observe that s is on top of one which is the first node before we start the reversal and it's gonna stay on top of one during the entire process so s is still on top of one s still on top of one until the end of the reversal the only pointer that is changing reference throughout the process is t so t will be at the beginning at two then it will be at three and finally at four so keep in mind one of the key insights of understanding how the reversal works is understanding that P stays before the sublist and S stays on top of the first node before the reversal starts. We begin the process by using temp and temp will always be one node after S. So observe here that temp T will be after S too. Then T will be after S, which will be three. And finally T will be after four so that's important we start the process first by pointing s to the next element after t so s will point to three t will point to p dot next so the element p points to why are we doing that because we want to put t at the beginning of the sublist and that's what t is responsible for t will always be on top of the element we want to throw in front of the sublist so observe the gist of the problem is that t stays on top of a node and throws it before just after p so observe t is on top of two we throw it here afterwards two will be at the beginning T is on three, now we're gonna throw it at the beginning. Four is at, uh, T is at four, we throw it at the beginning. So it references the element we're moving to the beginning of the sublist. So T dot next will point to P dot next. 
And finally, p.next, we change the reference to point to t. Why are we doing that? Because now p, the first element of the sublist, which was before 1, is 2. So we need to change the reference of p to 2. And we do this process over and over again. Now t, we move t to the element after s. So t is now 3. We point s to the element after t. So now 1 points to 4. T points to the P dot next. So T will point to 2. With, and P will reference T. And then with that, with that procedure, we move 3 to the beginning of the list. And we do that over again. And we have the reversal of the list. I hope by showing the code, it will help you understanding the problem. But it's really hard i think it took me some time to understand maybe you have more ease understanding the procedure but if you struggle through it just persist that i think you understand the link to the picture and to the problem will be on the description so let's take a look at the code we create a dummy we create a dummy reference that will reference the beginning of the link list sublist.head will be the same as p so sublist.head will reference the nodes just before the beginning of the sublist that's what we do here this loop here we're gonna move p to the beginning to one node before the sublist so that's what this loop does it goes from one to m and m is the beginning of the sublist so sublist.head will be p Sublist eater will be the next element after sublist had done x, and we are never changing the reference. So sublist eater will be s. Sublist eater will be s. It will always stay on top of uh, one in that example I showed. And if you take a look at this chunk of code, we're not moving sublist eater to point to anything else. This loop here is exactly this uh, change of references that we did with the arrows here so i think this is one of the key uh, elements of understanding the problem and we're doing that n minus m times uh, which is the range so two times uh, which is the range of the the size of the sublist temp will point to sublist eater dot next so as i said t will always point to the element after s throughout the process and these three assignments are the procedure are the gist of the problem so sublist eater dot next equals temp dot next so that's this arrow here so sublist eater dot next equals temp dot next we're changing this reference here temp.next equals sublist head.next so now we're moving whatever t is pointing to to the beginning of the list so that's this arrow here we're moving here temp.next equals sublist head.next and finally p.head.next sublist head.next will equals temp and when we do these three assignments, we have this new list here, two, one, three, and four. If we do this for loop over and over again, we'll have the sublist reversed. This problem is kind of tricky. So try to go over the picture that I'll put on the description, try to understand what's going on, try to understand the, this code assignments here and convince yourself that the sublist is being reversed. If it takes more time than usual, that's okay, because this is a hard problem, in my opinion. So if you like these questions, I, I really appreciate getting a thumbs up. It shows that the uh, content I'm putting out there is valuable. And also subscribe and join the Facebook group where we have weekly lives solving algorithms questions. So see you guys in the next videos.